Congratulations on a hell of a win, hell of a performance. How you feel about your performance, man? How'd you think you did? Um, I did good, but uh, not my best. You know, being out, out the ring for 18 months, I give to a, a B plus. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of things to work on. And, um, you know, I, like I always say, I'm my, big, I'm my biggest critic. I don't, I don't need nobody else to criticize me. I know what I got to do. And um, I just got to get back to the drum board. But, man, that's still impressive. An 18-month layoff. You come back and you fight a young, hungry prospect. And, and you, I mean, obviously the split decision was crazy. You unanimously beat him. But yet you still don't feel like you put on the kind of performance I guess you wanted to. Absolutely not, man. Um, I know I could I could have did better, but you know my timing was a little off. I was I was anxious, and uh, man, it just I don't know. I like criticizing myself because that's what keeps me going, man. If, if you think you you know everything in boxing, you're, you're wrong, man. That's that's when you can run into a lot of problems. For sure, bro. You you have defeated back to back hot prospects and, and Vasquez and Al Perella. It. it are you looking for the step up welterweight opponents? Or are you con more than content knocking these prospects off that they put you against that I guess they kind of count you out in? I'm, to be honest, man, I'm, I'm not a young young scrapper anymore. And uh, they keep putting me in here with these, with these, young, um, these young, younger fighters. And uh, I, want, I want the top guys, man. I, I've been saying it for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I guess they wanted to test test my will and test my ability to see where I'm at. And, uh, to, you know, these two victories right here just shows where I'm at and what I'm willing to do. And, and the record of your last three opponents, obviously, with Thurman, Vasquez, and Perella, 61-2. and two. So that, that, to me, tells me you don't just want to exist in this division. You are willing to fight top guys, and you are willing to go forward and pursue that championship dream. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, it's amazing because I never had the chance to really hand pick my fighters. Mm -hmm. Whoever they gave me, that's who I had to fight. That was just that's the underdog life. And um, I'm not gonna stop picking cherries now. Like I'm, I'm close, you know, closer to the end of my career. And um, like I said before, I just want to fight the best before I, before I leave the boxing game. I talked about you on Twitter um, Saturday night during and after the fight. And a lot of fans picked up on what I was saying. They felt like you're just a guy who, that's never really got to just do. But you can beat anybody on any given night. Is, is that your mentality? Because you, you do kind of relish in the underdog role. But you can beat anyone on any given night. Is that your approach? Absolutely, man. The, the, the beauty of, of boxing is anything can happen. Like you're saying, every, at any given night, anything can happen. And, um, you know... The last couple of, uh, I'd say the last two years, I've truly grown to, to really understand and, and, and learn what I've done wrong in the past. And um, I'm just capitalizing off of that. And I take it for what it is, the time off that I, was, I had uh, the last 18 months. And I'm 100, 110% focused now. I know in boxing, there's, there's no shortcuts. You got to be across the board. You got to be 110 percent. And um, I learned that the hard way. You know, being defeated by a Thurman, I feel like I wasn't a 110 percent all around the board. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a, a, a long camp for that fight. I always get short notice. But that just that just been my my luck in the boxing world. I talked to Brian Perilla prior to the fight, and he said he expected you to try to walk him down and, and put a lot of pressure on him. That's exactly what you did. That's what he expected, and yet he still had no answer for it. Was that the game plan going in, or did you see something in him during the course of the fight that let you know you can apply that kind of pressure? To be honest, um, doing my homework, you know, in boxing, you got you to gotta educate yourself. And um, I just watched a lot of his film, and I, I noticed going backwards, he wasn't the greatest uh greatest fighter going backwards and putting mm -hmm. pressure on and uh you know going in i wanted to be in the outside a little more but his reach and um his height man i just couldn't adapt and the timing was a little off and I'm, i was anxious i'm like you know what i gotta take this fight inside and push him back and um that's what i did and i'm glad i did that 
it, it looked it, it appears in the fourth, fifth round or so. His shots didn't have a whole lot on him. You can see his legs starting to get weary from him fighting off the back foot. Did you sense that? And did you did you feel that his shots were starting to be more on punches somewhere in the middle of the fight? Absolutely. Um, I think the pressure really got to him. He never uh, had that pressure put on him. Uh, he never fought a, a type of fighter like myself. But, um, you know, pressure bus, bus pipes, man. And um, he's young. He never experienced that. And uh, it's the first time for everything. Uh, you've been in with Thurman, Amir Khan, Victor Ortiz, Andre Berto, Ricky Hatton, Shamo. The, the list goes on and on uh, of the your resume stuff. Is, now that you're looking at the landscape of the welterweight division, who do you see as the top dog right now? Because obviously that's the aim. That's the goal for you. Who do you see out of the Crawford, Spence, Garcia, Porters? Who do you see as the top dog? And Thurman. To be honest, man, every, all of them got different styles, man. And, and they, bring different, bring this, they bring different stuff to the table. Mm-hmm. You know, Crawford, Crawford can do it all, man. He can box, he can, he can bring it, he can switch from lefty to righty. He's crafty, he's, he got that ball in him. Um, Spence, he's just a, you know, he's a big puncher. Mm -hmm. He's aggressive. He really don't move much. So just a matter of time before someone capitalizes off of that. Um, Thurman, he, he haven't fought, I believe, since my fight, I believe. Yes, it's been a while. And, um, you know, he's a great boxer, but he don't punch as as, as hard as everybody think he does. Okay. Um, Porter is a bull. He's, he's beatable. Garcia, he can punch, but he's beatable as well. It just all these fighters bring different things to the table, and that's the beauty of the game that at any given night, like you said, they can be, they can be defeated. You just got to bring your A game. 18 months off, uh, Lewis. I know you're not looking for that kind of um, layoff again. It, is activity the key to you being the 100% Lou Colazzo that you just talked about? Absolutely, man. Um, I got to stay active. I got to stay busy. And um, I really don't have time to waste, man. I just want to get back in, back into that ring with, the, with someone that's going to motivate me and so I can train harder. Mm-hmm. And um, give my 110%. It seems like the division is so crowded that we see these matches starting to be made now. The only two guys, I think, without dance partners is uh, Thurman. Obviously, whenever he's coming back. Errol's trying to come back at the end of the year. Look like it may be Mikey. Um, anybody in particular you want to test your skills against uh, next? Or is it just one of the top 10, top 5 kind of guys? I want to, like... To be honest, man, I would love to fight Manny Pacquiao. I know he was saying, oh, you don't deserve. Me and him is the only ones left from the last era. That's right. And um, we, we had a, almost a similar age bracket. He's a little older than him. I am, but I think that fight be a, a hell of a fight in uh, the Philippines. I'm willing to go across the across the pond to go over there and fight him, man. I, I just want to fight the top guys, man, before I, get, before I leave the boxing game. That's actually a fight I didn't think about, but that, that fight seems to make a lot of sense, both southpaws, like you said, age brackets, experience-wise. How do you see a fight between you and Manny playing out? It, I don't know, man. To be honest, it'd be a hell of a fight because Manny brings it, I bring it. We, like you said, we both southpaws, and uh, we both got a little pop in our hands. Every Everyone seemed to, the consensus on social media seems to be Every time you count Luis Colazzo out, he seems to find a way to turn back the hands of time and rewind the clock. Can we stop saying that now and just expect you to be focused every time and we're going to get this every single time out? Nah, from now on, trust me, I'm going to be 110% all across the board. I just need, you know, I, I don't get that chance to have a full camp. Yeah. Every time they call me, they always give me a three-week notice. Like, these... To be in the, like, the top of the division, you got to have eight to, at least six to eight weeks of preparation. Easily, definitely. You know, all these champions are, are, are getting the opportunity, but I never get the, I always get the short end of the stick. No, for because sure. Because they know if I'm 110% ready, I'm going to be a problem. Without a doubt. Well, you showed that, and I think a lot of prospects are going to perhaps start turning down fights with you, and maybe that'll force 
some of the other guys at the top to fight you. Hell of a performance. Always a pleasure to watch you. Anything before I let you go, my man? Uh, I want to thank all my fans, man, for, for being patient and, and always supporting me. And for those doubters, thank you. You're, y'all y'all have been the motivation to me, my son. And um, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Real Louis Colazo. Thank you again.